way to start this fucking interview. I am joined by Vended just a couple of days before uh, taking to what is, I guess, the virtual stage of Pulse of the Maggots Fest. So at present, there's no Vended on Spotify. There's no Vended on iTunes What we or Apple Music. What we can do is see a YouTube set from you guys. Is it going to be ace to get your music out there in a better represented way? I'm fucking excited. Yeah, it's coming. We're, it's, we got stuff in the works. Yeah, it's uh, it's just one of those things, you know. You gotta, you gotta keep it building. It's like, it's like marinating and all that. So there's reasons why things are not out yet. We're, we're just trying to build it up. We're, we're still trying to work and trying to get the, uh, uh trying to get the music as perfect as possible. Even me, I'm still trying to like get the lyrics just right for people. I love that. I love that. So we're going to get to see you play live this Friday at Pulse of the Maggots Fest. Uh, even looking at you right now, there's an aesthetic to things. And live streams have kind of lived and died on, I think, the look and feel of things. If a band has been dry, if a band has not really been in the moment and lent themselves to it, it's kind of fallen by the wayside but bands that have really engaged with it i don't know if you saw the code orange stream the other week like bands that have really fucking embraced it um is that exciting for vended because i'm excited even looking at you in a car outside your rehearsal room let alone <laughs> on friday getting to the show That's itself the fact that we couldn't get the re recording working <laughs> yeah it's, we're very we're all very excited I mean, I can speak for everyone. We yeah. we yeah. were we were fucking stoked to even do it, and it was it was a long process for sure. It was I'm not gonna say it was stressful. It was a wake up call, kind of like, hey, you guys want to do this? We're like, You're fuck, not. you know, like shit. Let's do this. So I'm not gonna say it's stressful, but I'm gonna say it's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we're we're excited because this is like. This is our first like actual like virtual uh, yeah. yeah all together yeah. like this is our first festival so yeah I lo yeah. love that love that and Simon the thing is even from our exchanges on emails I can tell how intense and into this band that you guys are um, what do you think the world will learn about Vended on Friday? Mm -hmm. Oof. Mm. Uh, they're Monday. gonna get a view of. Oh, Venda. I mean, uh, Vended. Yeah. Professional recorded, professional video view of Vended. They're gonna I mean, get. They're gonna get a view of absolute just built-in chaos, hate chaos. And chaos, and just hungriness, and how we want it really bad. So yeah. you're gonna I, see a lot of me just hitting myself, and everyone hitting themselves, and at some point someone's gonna get kicked in the dick. But I mean, <laughs> that's just kind of that. That kind of is. That's the. That's Vendead. That's Vendead. Yeah. Yeah. That's Vendead. That you get kicked in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I guess when you say that the music is fueled on chaos and hate, 2020 has been a really fucking weird year to say the least. And we've all been caged up and locked down for a while. Has this set for Pulse of the Maggots Fest? felt like a release for you as well because even when you say being in the room after kind of us all being isolated yourselves included getting to be in the room and getting to let that out was that uh was that a really cathartic thing for you guys it was it was kind of hard for me because when we uh did that uh when we did the like the the, the recording for the not first thing I when after that got done, I went home and immediately cried because I felt like I didn't do a good job. I'm no, not kidding. No. My mother can attest to this because she, j I just walk up to her and she sees me and she's just like, "What have you got on your face?" And I just go, "It's bad." <laughs> and I just started crying because I was like, I felt like I did a shit job and I just want to show people that I can do a good job. They also don't tell you how hot those fucking lights are. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> like... Degrees, humid uh, as fuck, sweat flying we, everywhere. We recorded it in a very special way and people will notice that. I'm not going to spoil anything, but I'm not kidding. Those lights, there were about four of those like professional filming, directing lights in that room and i swear to god it was hotter than anything that i've ever been through yeah. like 
hotter than asphalt on like a 90 degree day. Like Considering it was, it was so bad. <laughs> it's, it's definitely a different vibe when you don't have a crowd response though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we do we do have a good chemistry where we can feed off of each other, but it is kind of it's a lot different. It's hard to do it without uh, without an actual crowd in front of yeah. you. But that's the that's the challenge that we took because it was yeah. a very good release to be in the room with all our brothers, family, and just play our parts and look at each other and go, "Holy shit, we're doing it!" And it was it feels good because you know COVID has been a really shitty thing for a lot of people, and it's it sucks because a lot of bands you know can't really do much. And they had to go get normal jobs, like tour managers and stuff like that. Mm. So it, that's why I felt good to actually like be a part of something that can change like everything. So mm. I, I love that. I love that. You guys now, Simon and Griffin. I know how you know each other, but as a band, <laughs> the most exciting thing to have sat with all of you at once, which you insisted on doing. I think that's a great thing. How did this become a gang? How long have you guys known each other as a group of people? Well, the whole well, the whole concept of the band started with me and Cole. Uh, Cole walked up to me and asked me uh, and asked me if uh, if I wanted to like do a band thing with him, and yeah. I said, "Fuck yeah, I like music." I, yeah, that, um, this was back in eighth grade when mm -hmm. we were like probably thirteen. And uh, we were in the same class, so I went up and asked him to start jamming and start playing and stuff. Wasn't it when I did the uh, when I wore one of my dad's masks on uh, during the talent show? And I did uh, a hold Probably, yeah. with a fake guitar because I don't know how to do play guitar. So after like after they they've been together for a while, so they had this in the works and. Um, I just got a random text for Griffin. We didn't talk that much really. We kind of like. Cause we were we were different kids back then, you know. Like you know, you have your certain types of friends. So we were different people. So he. You thought I hated you, yeah, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. We'll get into that later. <laughs> but he texted me out of nowhere, and he's like, "Hey, um, I'm like doing something. If you want to join, blah blah blah." He's like, "Do you want to?" It was more complex than that, but we like traded text, like back and forth, back and forth. I didn't even know who Cole was, and we. I like remember packing up a snare and packing up um a pedal and stuff like that and i took it to cole's house and he had a drum set already set up and i put my snare and pedals there and all three of us just kind of jammed and it felt right it, it felt right it felt right that was uh two years ago about two years ago in february cole who were you listening to at that point in time when you guys were starting to, to talk about doing a band and started putting this together what kind of bands were you into um, I was into a lot of classic rock, like uh, Guns N' Roses, Led Zeppelin, All Dead, Ra Raging <laughs> Um, And then slowly, as I started, we started going in the band. I started listening to more metal and getting more deep into that kind of stuff. But definitely classic rock, Jimi Hendrix, stuff like that. That was who I was really listening to at that point. And at this point in time, so being put together and but like starting to come together. Um, when it came to defining a sound, do you feel like that's something that's still in the process or are what we, is what we're going to get a really true representation of where you think you're going to end up? Is this, is this work in progress stuff? I mean, even just the process since I got in the band, because I got in the latest, I'm like, I've been in for like a year. Even since I got in and started writing with them, shit's been changing. Yeah. It's the, the songs in the Pulse of the Maggot set are definitely the strongest ones that, you know, we have at the moment. But it's going to be changing in the next couple of years. Things are going to be different. That's what's mm -hmm. really good with For Vended is we're very diverse. Mm -hmm. And we all, we all have, like, what we do is, like, we don't set off, like, inspirations, kind of. We all kind of like work together and be like, this is what we want to do. And we kind of write like that. And tone wise, we're just very diverse and we're not like, you know, your stereotypical band. We just like to put a lot of heart and effort and writing and stuff like that. It's very important for us. We don't, uh, we don't take inspiration from like one source almost. Mm. We wouldn't consider ourselves like only metal influence. We, we take classic rock, jazz, metal, musicals, blues, musicals, everything. So it's, is it's it like Miz? 
Is it Les Mis you're talking about when it comes to musicals, or what kind of musicals are you into? What was Les Mis? Musicals. What kind of musicals? <laughs> uh, sorry, Les, Les Mis Relab was what I was talking about. Oh, I don't recognize that, sadly. No problem. I, I normally, I normally uh, uh, the type of musicals I like are like Rocky Horror, uh, Rent, uh, what was the, uh, Sweeney Todd. I like a, nice. I like a wide bit of uh, uh, musicals, but I'm still, I still need to get into, I need, I still need to find more musicals to get into, so. Yeah, love that. That's so, theatricality is part of musicals. I'm looking at your look and your aesthetic. Like, how important is that when it comes to the visual medium of putting your music out there? Because for me, I, I'm a music guy, right? I can't wait to see your, to hear your set on Friday because musically, I can't wait to hear what you've come up with. But visually, I can see it even in a car right now that there is effort there and there's thought there. Like, how do, you, how do you put that within the diversity of the music and put it all together for a set like Fridays? How, how does that look? How much of a part does the look play in things? I feel like the look does its job, but I feel like as, as the band, I feel like uh, we're more in tone with the music than the look. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know if that's the same with everyone else in the band. If yeah. they, I feel like the music. I mean, I feel like the look helps us separate from other bands a little bit more. It kind of creates a uniqueness, adding on to the music. So the music's unique as well as the look, almost kind of. I the way I look on it as look is, I think it's like my own personal monster. Like you know, if I was like writing with them, I'm not wearing the stuff. You know, I'm more like just. I'm my person, but when I'm playing live, I put on all this stuff and I feel like I'm a different person playing for a different world because it's really important. Like that's that's what I think of in the look. It's very like you're dip you're a different person in that format and you just you're killing it. That's what I think. I, I, I so I, I'm lucky enough to talk to all manner of bands that have exactly that same mindset as when the war paint goes on the personality changes. How do the personality change for you guys? How does your personality change once that mask comes on? Because because that's a very different thing. And one of you in the back has an actual machete. So I know violence is part of it. <laughs> this, man, this man knows that feeling as in a different person. Like, uh, I can just speak for him but he can tell you how he feels because we all walk in and we're all like all right we gotta slam today let's do it and we slam and then he's over here like yeah. just, just going for it i feel like <laughs> fucking high kicks and shit <laughs> jumping off his shit i feel like i changed by becoming a little bit less of a bitch but i'm yeah, still just a, but just i'm just a little bit just a little bit less of a bitch i mean i'm still a bitch but i mean <laughs> so we just Lads, we're going to do a follow-up interview because I've got to see this set on Friday and let's do this again in a week or two once I've got something to go on when it comes to the music itself. Notfest.com, this coming Friday the 13th, no less. Vended, Pulse of the Maggots Fest. We'll see you there. Woo! Okay, welcome, yeah. to oh, welcome to Vended! Welcome to Vended, motherfuckers! <laughs> Don't forget to like and share this video and join me on Twitch every Tuesday, Friday and Saturday for guest hangouts, new music votes, tier lists, band specific competitions, weekly merch roundups and much, much more. That's twitch.tv forward slash mosh talks. Find the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you on notfest.com for all of the latest news, features and much more from the worlds of rock, metal and beyond. And...